Welcome to Live Let Thrive, a podcast about the Airbnb life, the share economy, and everything in between. Here are your hosts, Micah and Steve. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Live Let Thrive. <laughs> we are your hosts, Micah and... What's my name? What's my name? <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Micah and Steve and... This show is about Airbnb, share economy, real estate, all that implies. And yeah, and so we're doing uh, this episode 10, dude. We're in the double digits. Oh man, we're moving. Moving on up. Yeah. And last week's guest, James, was, um, yeah, we did an interview with, uh, with a local Airbnb guru named James. And um, he decided, uh, well, he was in the neighborhood, so he was going to just sit in on a, on a podcast with us. And hey, the more the merrier, you know. We had a good time with him. Yeah. He he might um, replace one of us in the future if we can't. No. You know? <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> He's no, like, no. no, no. It pays real good, man. It pays good money. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, James is sitting in with us today, so he'll, he'll give us some feedback and say hi, James. Hi guys. Hello. Hi guys. Hi. <laughs> oh, oh, we sound cooler. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, it sounded manly there. So yeah, we're gonna just. Start talking shop, man. Yeah, so last week we interviewed James, and uh, we didn't get to really get with Steve much about... He kind of texted me this week and asked me oh, yeah. if I had any uh, eviction notices. So, <laughs> sounds like he was being finessed by the guest, or he had having tenant issues. Well, so. we'll, we'll jump right into that, man. Um, so, so <laughs> last month, they were uh, my guests were kind of... Um, They'll giving me the whole sob story. Yeah, my truck, you know, is in the shop, and it's our only. I had to dish out all this money and ball bearings. Started naming all these parts. I was like, I didn't even had had that on a truck. But anyways, it's, it's, she gave me this whole sob story, and this and I'm gonna be short this this week, and and so um, on my guess, I, I let her pay me um, on the fifth on the the first and the fifteenth. That's when she pays me, and so. Um, and she pays me half on the first, half on the fifteenth, or or right around that Friday when she gets paid. You know, I guess I'm. I'm this is my first time doing it. I I don't. I, you know, I'm learning my lessons. I'm learning my yeah. lessons. And so, anyways, she um, she was she didn't have all of it on the first. She was able to give me like three hundred, you know, and it's and it's twelve it's twelve fifty a month is what she's oh. paying, and she gave me three hundred. But the following Friday, she gave me another three hundred installment, right? And the following Friday, another three something, and then the following Friday, she she was able to pay the whole month in full. It took her a month to pay it, but she paid it in full. So that's why I was hitting you up. I was getting frustrated, and I've and I had the whole frustration thing with the condo I'm trying to buy in South Padre Island, which I have an update on that too. My my what's the update? My friend. <laughs> um, well, let's let's stick to the house first. I'll get to the condo in a second. So all this stuff was. Uh, weighing on me big time and I that's when I hit you up dude I need some eviction notices <laughs> stat I said get on your legal zoom send me whatever you got I, I, I'm just tired of this I want to start my Airbnb right because my, my house is perfect it's right by the stadiums I want to start it already throw a pool table in there throw the foosball in there get it you know do what I want to do and um and so anyways um they paid in full I'm a big wuss I haven't kicked her out yet and so we're we're starting off this month, this month of August, and we'll see. <laughs> so she would technically still be behind, right? Well, she's paid up. She paid all of, all of July, and so you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. But this Friday coming up, this is when she. I I, I say the Friday, like the first Friday of the month, is when she yeah. pays me the first half. The you know. The, she's gonna hit you with Friday four installments again. And and that's the question. Um, if. Hey, if if four installments equaled the rent, would would, uh, would y'all do something like that? I'll ask. Um, yeah, I'll ask y'all. You, James, and and Micah. I'll let James go first. I I I wouldn't because it creates a logistical um, headache on your part because you have to keep track of it and you forget and you have to track them down every week if they do four installments and stuff like that because you're agreed to a month and they should be able to do it. I mean, every once in a while I understand, but I would lean towards like no. So have you had? Uh, similar problems with the yeah, so it was a rent called nice and I forgot about it. <laughs> well, yeah. I write, I, the, I do write receipts every time, so right. it, at least I know exactly how much she paid me, how much she owes me, 
whatever. Okay. Which is a, it's just old school. Buy a, a two dollar receipt book, and that's mm-hmm. that's how I've been doing it. And um, she doesn't have. I mean, it'd be great. The the thing is, and you know this because you you rent out in war zones, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying where my house. <laughs> he literally had a dead body in the front war yard. Zones. That's a war zone. That's the <laughs> the definition of war is death. <laughs> and so and so, anyways. Um, a lot of these, a lot of these lower income renters don't even have checking accounts. I dealt with that. Yes. So they give you, they want to give you cash, which sucks going to a war zone for cash, but not that. Yeah. Eh, whatever. Uh, Arlington's some parts of Arlington's a little rough around the edges. Yeah. But um, anyways, I I would love to have my renters just PayPal me the money every month. That would be that would be my dream, and hopefully the next renters that get in there or. What I'm gonna do is Airbnb it out. You know, it'll all be um, um, PayPal, you know, or yeah. something, some, 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 or through the platform of Airbnb. You don't, you don't have to pay. Are you talking about like a regular, regular tenant? A regular, a regular tenant, yeah. Well, if you get a business checking account, and you give them your account number. They can just go to the the bank and do that's, it that way. That's, that's a good idea too. I actually, research that because if uh, if she's gonna pay me in these installments or whatever, mm-hmm. I mean, there's a there's I I, I want to open a uh, Chase. I thought Chase would because they're everywhere, right? Chase. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was gonna ask you guys, what's a good a good bank to get just for a not even a business, just a regular checking or whatever that doesn't charge that charge me, you know? I I personally don't use the bank. I use, but you bring a good point with that. I may look into that in the future, but I just use Cozy. You can just have like ten properties sitting there, and if as long as they make one transaction, they just take three bucks out of it. You can keep up with all your leases, all your whoever stand there, and you just tell them to create a cozy account, and they just pay you through a portal, kind of like an apartment. And oh, so but okay, so they go online and they pay with their check, yeah. bank card, check card, whatever. Mm-hmm. And, okay. and when you do corporate rentals, they're usually always going to have the money. So what they do is they just uh, pretty much have a. I had it automatically withdrawn out their account. And you can like, Cozy will send you up updates when the money's coming and when it's left their account. Like yesterday, it sent me, hey, the money's on its way. It'll be there August 3rd. So, I mean, it's all types of ways to do it. I'm thinking about the bank account way too because I may be able to get the money faster. I don't, I don't have corporate rentals, so I'm more of the, the war zone type tenants. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't have checking accounts. And they don't have checking accounts. So um, at first, because I was really good, because like, I bought that August log. Um, uh-huh. And so I'm very gung-ho on the tech stuff. And so I wanted, Venmo is like a really popular app where you can send money. What's uh, it called? Uh, well, college students, uh, there's an app called Venmo where you can send each other money. Um, or there's another app called Square Cash, which is, okay. you can also do the same thing, which isn't as popular. With, uh, with First college. Square yeah and so i tried doing that but a huge uphill battle and then like i just went old school uh, which was uh, yeah i went old school facebook cash would be another similar thing it required them to take a set up an account and hook it up or something like that but with just the um the cash thing they just go to the chase chase bank and they uh they would deposit it <laughs> the deposit and you can see it on your, your your chase online account so you don't have to physically go to the house every every month and do it and it worked so you, out. you have chase then yeah that's, I, that's I what chase. i was thinking of getting chase yeah i have, I have chase and it's on the unlim- well pretty much unlimited um deposits right because I, ha- I opened up a comerica one before and they were saying well you know cash deposits you you know we take a certain percentage and it was it was like all these, these what? yeah <laughs> that's what you don't want like the people trying to get their little money in off of taking a payment you know and that, that's why i liked cozy because they're just like three bucks one if they make one transaction you can have 10 properties they'll just take well three chase bucks. is free you just yeah. got to keep a 1500 hundred dollar minimum right right there's a minimum depo- the amount yeah. you need in a chase to keep it free and then it's free otherwise they do take a percentage you know Dang. And so that's it's not a deal. bad deal because there's chases everywhere. Chase yeah, that, banks. That's one thing that interests me about all landlords, how we take payment, you know, because <laughs> yeah. it, it, it turns into a hassle. I mean, it's like all three of us have different ways of doing it, you know. Oh, man. There's no uh, $3 fee with Chase, so there's also that. <laughs> <laughs> True. Boom. Boom. You can put True. that on a weed stock and then be rich, man. You know what I'm hey. saying? Three bucks. James just stock. banged on Cozy, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you kind of. Yeah. Bit. But so, so you know, oh, oh, and uh, one that I heard that a uh, way to collect was, and I heard it on Bigger Pockets too, which, which, and they have a link through uh, Bigger Pockets to to get to this. Um, it's called um, Pay Anywhere. You've heard of that? 
No. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Pay Near Me. It's called Pay Near Me. It's an app where um, they have to put the... um, They have to put the... uh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm drawing a blank here. It might might be the bourbon. (laughs) (laughs) So they have to... um, Oh, they can pay cash at Family Dollar or 7-Elevens. Mm-hmm. They can go and, and I guess you give them a code, whatever, and they pull it up on their smartphone because even poor people have smartphones. They have a better smartphone than I got, which is weird. Damn. You know? yeah. <laughs> Just call them out. Poor people. I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying, okay. Um, um, wealthy challenged. Is that the appropriate? <laughs> anyways, so so anyways, you're with this pay near me, I think it's, well, there's some other spots too, but I know for sure it's Family Dollar, which is every freaking corner of everywhere, especially in the hood. And then um, 7-Elevens, again, in the hood. And so, um, and you give them, and they, they have like a barcode. But the thing is, it does charge that $3 a transaction. So, they, but the thing is, that, I mean, they go to the family dollar. Here's my, I pay my, pay my rent, boom, 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 give them the cash. They scan the thing, get a receipt, and there you go. And it's in my account immediately. What? And I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm like, $3, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. better than me driving. It's like, a, a, you know, I'm spending that much in gas. But the thing is, I went through that link to the bigger pockets, and it says, and it says, um, pay near me does not does not work for sole proprietorship. Yeah, I guess you have to be an LLC. You have to be some kind of company. Okay. Because you can't just be a sole proprietor trying to collect money that way. I don't yeah. know why. I don't know what kind of rules there yeah, are. I'm an LLC, so okay. I know what they. Yeah, I'm an LLC. So you're, yeah. you're the LLC guru, from what no. I know. Because I yeah. remember talking to you just when we started chatting before we knew each other, you know, and you're like, oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to start the LLC right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Usually I, I do. I do start an LLC. Like if I feel like something's going somewhere, yeah, I'll start an LLC. So anyway, pay near me. It's a great idea. I wish there was more ideas where people could pay cash places and it goes into your account. That would be great. But mm-hmm. maybe they're worried about the whole money laundering thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> For real. So, so uh, you... Decided not to evict the guest. Yeah, I told uh, you I'm a big freaking wuss, dude. <laughs> oh, okay, so <laughs> and, update. And, oh, and, and okay, I'll, I'll keep the show about me. I'm cool with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, so this, I mean, I'm always a wuss too, you know. But it takes time to like to get thick to skin, grow a pair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I, what are I, you I saying lie, over man. there, James? It, it, it does get kind of. <laughs> It's kind of like, you know, you do kind of feel like a badge for kind of evicting people. Because I know even with my long-term tenant that I have in my in one of my private rooms, she kind of tells me the sob story. But she does pay. But, you know. But oh, I, she's I, still I, there. I still hand them that 30-day notice every time it's time to, you know, get out. To you get know, out, I don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't hesitate to do that. You know about that, James? The 30-day notice? No, uh, they give them 30 days to move out or something? Or what do you mean? Yeah, well, with Airbnb... If you have people staying over 30 days, you still have to give them a 30-day notice or else they can squat in your house. Uh, I heard about that, but I never really had that problem uh, come up. So Yeah, so yeah. I mean, it's only some people that do it. I just do it to protect myself, but yeah, I still hand them the 30-day notice. So if $10 a day guy would have stayed there past 30 days, you would have been screwed, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My still, mom would killed me. He'd still be there right now. <laughs> Yeah, man. Did you, uh, what is that show? Um, Silicon Valley. You ever you ever watch that show? Silicon I, I've Valley. I seen bits and pieces on Facebook. You know how to have like clips of it or something. <laughs> yeah. It's a hilarious show. I've only seen it while on airplanes. I work for. Uh, by the way, I work for uh, a major airline, so I fly for free. Okay. And, and overseas, they were showing this, and that was one of the things they had. So I watched like every episode of it. You know, or, or like five, seven episodes. And and um, this don't worry, I'll connect it all to the Airb or to the <laughs> to the rental world. <laughs> Anyways, the one of the funny guys on the uh, funny, real, real funny dude. I, I forgot his name on the show. One of the main characters. He he has he happens to have a house there in Silicon Valley, and he rents it out to these to to the tech dudes, nerds, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And for some, I don't know how it happened because, like I said, I just started. I started wherever, whatever episodes they had on the plane, and there was this um this dude from China that was living with them, right? And I guess he thought in his head, well, this, this guy from China will help us, help us out with tech. And he didn't actually know anything about tech. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a funny show, right? Whatever. It okay. happened. And he's living there. And he's finally like, he's like, um, I, f- I forgot his name. Lee, I need you. I'm going to need you to leave, man. I'm sorry. You, you got to go. He's like, really? I got to go? And he's like, yeah. Um, you know, 
you just gotta go because because if you stay too and he's and he and he accidentally said you stay too long you know these these dang california laws you know you could you could actually you know i, I need you out because some people even take advantage of people here in the united states you don't even know like especially in california i mean you could just stay here a squatter and you could be here two years and i couldn't do anything about it you know it's just crazy here in the states and, he, and he's like are you saying I could stay two years in your house no. without paying rent? <laughs> and you can't kick me out? And he's like, oh, damn. <laughs> he's like, the guy was like, <laughs> <laughs> So that's where I left off on the show. Oh, <laughs> so he just kind of distracted dude. the dude. Yeah. And now he's stuck with the guy. <laughs> yeah, man, squatting, man. Squatting's become the new thing. Like, I'm, Texas, Texas is pretty uh, straightforward. Texas is good about it, right? Uh, uh, no. No? No, Wait, what? You, got, you didn't hear about that guy who squatted on a house and got a six a, a house for sixteen bucks. That's three hundred thousand dollars. You're talking about the Flower Mound house. It was like, like a, years and years and years ago. No, no, no this is recent, man. A this different like one. Twenty fifteen. Oh, okay. This dude no. got paid for a house for sixteen bucks after squatting in it. The house is like three hundred thousand dollars. How long are you squatting for? I think he squatted a few months. It was a several months. We'll have to add it to the show notes. We got to look it up and add it to the show notes. Yeah, right, this dude right, right. squatted in a crib. And that doesn't <laughs> sound right, though. I, I, I know squatting well, in general doesn't sound right. <laughs> it ain't right, man. Nah, you know. So, yeah. uh, I guess it goes back to the old west days. If there's like an abandoned shack on some land, people could, like, yeah. you know, people wanted people to to. I don't say populate the land. They wanted to use the <laughs> land, so someone wasn't using it. They had a claim to it. If you stayed there. A uh, year, two years, it's all of a sudden it's yours yeah. because no one's using it. I you guess go it goes school. it goes way back to the old days, but yeah. now it's just people taking advantage of the system. Well, we, we have uh, rules where um, we call it easements. If you let the easement go through for a certain amount of time, then you you um, you, uh, you it's stuck pretty much. So so what's the easement? I mean, uh, an easement would be like say if I owned um, this is mostly in farmland. So I have owned farmland, and the government needs like a road through my farmland, so that would be considered an easement. Okay. Uh, or the case of the fourplex that I bought, mm-hmm. my neighbor built a gate on the side of the house, so that there's like a makeshift driveway. So I'm in the middle of like trying to call uh, Fort Worth City uh, compliance to uh, essentially rat out my neighbor, which I don't want to do, but you kind of have to because if you don't, then under the eyes of the law, you, you, you pretty much let it happen. So you quote unquote agreed to it, and so you have to be a little bit proactive in, in that case. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, that's stuff I don't know about. Good stuff. Hmm. Real quickly, on on you were here last week, right? For for your famous yes. the James interview, you know it's got so many hits, it's unbelievable. And <laughs> <laughs> he's like the Donald Trump of podcasting now. It's he's the uh, the best. I don't know where I'm going with that. Anyways, um, you said you had some crazy stories, and that was one of the stuff. Real quick, I don't want to turn this into an interview show because it's just you know, but. Yeah, you said you had some crazy. Oh, dude, I didn't tell you some crazy stories about Airbnb. And oh my god, that's guess? what I wanted to hear. Oh my god, that's what yeah. I wanted to hear on the last <laughs> yeah. show. We didn't get to it. We because I mean, the last show was long. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh man, who do I start with? <laughs> well, your ten dollar guy was a good start. A ten dollar guy. <laughs> ten dollar oh, make uh, you holler. The guy that made you uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the guy that made me uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So um, I do what's called instant book, which is basically. They can book your place instantly, and they show up, which is kind of good and kind of bad at the same time. So it's kind of good because it's supposed to get you more guests, is what I heard. And I don't have to like talk to everyone and be like, you're cool. you know. They just book and be like, yeah. And Airbnb has <laughs> saved messages, so you can just send like a little canned message or something. Yeah. Most of the time, I send them the Wi-Fi password because everyone asks for that. And so with instant booking, you don't get to filter out people. And so you, you, um, you take everyone that basically instant books. And like, I I'm a pretty easygoing guy. I'm like chill and stuff. But there, there's one guy though that kind of like freaked me out. <laughs> Only one guy during the whole time at Airbnb freaked me out. You know? I look at him. I'm like, there's a chill up my spine. Oh, but damn no, it! No, no, no. <laughs> but I'm like, <laughs> I mean, he's a nice guy, but it's just so weird, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what did he do that was weird? This is just demeanor his way of talking to people and the way he looked you know like i mean it's hard to describe because it like you get it it's hard to describe a vibe you get someone because you, you, yeah. you know because you get a vibe and he just gave me like a creeped out vibe and the, the best way to describe him is like nothing against these kids but like you know like in high school you have that one corner and that one kid is kind of like weird you're like you know, that's <laughs> the trench coat kid the trench coat kid <laughs> I had the trench coat kid without the trench coat. 
<laughs> oh no, no. Yeah, and it was just so weird. And he was asking is the washing machine, and I specifically listed that washing machine isn't allowed because my mother was like, "People are gonna break our washing." Because it's the um, it's kind of sidetracked. The washing machine, our washing machine, needs a certain amount of load to um, for it to function properly, and people be washing like one shirt. And I'm like, oh. had that guest. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, man. Our first guest, man. He was like washing his work clothes over and over one shirt one shirt with yeah. so, so i had to put a rule on my listing like hey you have to stay seven plus days to use the washing machine yeah yeah so i mean because it actually breaks the machine you know yeah. so you gotta like watch out for that so this guy is like i want to use your washing machine i'm like no bro it's not in the thing you know like there's a laundromat like, i want to use a washing machine i'm like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. gotta wash the blood <laughs> <laughs> Strong armed him into using it. <laughs> All right, dog, no, go ahead. Man. Well, kind of, man, dude. I was scared. Oh, some bleach. <laughs> some bleach. I'm like, yeah, I really want to use it. I'm like, oh. hey, mom, let's make, a, let's make an exception. You know, um, I, I want to live. <laughs> <I wanna>. <laughs> <laughs> Strong armed by the guest. Strong oh, armed. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, but. <laughs> Yeah, but he's really quiet and stuff. Um, I'm sure he was a nice guy, I guess. But I mean, but it's just the vibe I got, and just the only one that genuinely like kind of like creeped me out was just that one guest. What kind of review did he leave you? Five stars. Oh, oh even right. though you didn't let him use the washing machine. I guess I'm a likable guy. <laughs> it was a test. You he got his own bathroom. <laughs> yeah, you know. So yeah, yeah. I get I gave him five stars. I give every guest five stars. But then I also like write the same review for every guest. I'm like, great guest. That's my true point. <laughs> <laughs> me too, man. Well, except for one, the guy who cussed me out. I oh, really? Really. What? Yeah, yeah, guy cussed me out, man. What's the story behind that? <laughs> so you know, I list my timeshares on there, right? Mm-hmm. And he like chose one of the kind of the lower end units, just a studio at mm-hmm. this hotel. So I was like, it's listed in the list and everything that's there. And like, he got mad because he couldn't find it. And, like, he starts cussing on the phone, but, like, he wasn't cussing at me, so I wasn't tripping about it. So, he gets there, and he didn't like the place, so he sent a message to me and my wife, and he was cussing. So, I was, like, I was about to go off on him. I was, like, hold up, dude. What are you talking about? Like, so, what kind of cousin? I was, like, what the F is this? What? The yeah, yeah. He was, like, what the F is this? He was, like, this is an effing hotel. And I was, like, hold up, player. Damn. So, my wife, she texts me. She goes, Micah, calm down. Don't calm down. Don't do not do Because she already knew I was about to say something back to him. Okay. And so, he ends up leaving us a one-star review, man, so. Oh, well. Did you leave him in one star? No, I left him like a three star on communication and gave him a five on everything else. So it probably averaged out to like a four. Uh, yeah, okay. but I've been tripping. I just took the listing down because I heard some bad play- some bad reviews about the place. So, okay. oh, well. They evened out. He's only one star ever. So. Okay. I, uh, that's, that's pretty fun hearing y'all's crazy stories. I, I'll be there one day. I'm going to get my Airbnb up and running. And uh, I don't know about Instant Book, though. It kind of scares me. Get it. No, no, they uh, they re- they um they have a um a uh, filter now where you have to have a certain uh, requirements to before you build uh, Instant Book. Yeah, it's okay. legit. Okay, it's cool, legit. Cool, no. cool. But the only thing I don't like about Instant Book, even though they have those features, the person can have one five star review and they they can still Instant Book your place. But they're not brand new though. That's cause, true. Because sometimes brand new people, you have to walk them through everything, which is fine, which yeah. is fine. But sometimes um, More they work. Uh, I get a, I get a, I get an instant. Okay, this I get an instant book in like three in the morning, and they're like open the door and i'm like i was sleeping <laughs> you know like, like come oh, on you, you don't do the check-in time what you don't do the like check-in time like hey you can't check in past two o'clock in the morning i don't remember it's yeah. a long time ago when i set up the account oh okay, okay. <laughs> okay yeah i do the uh well i'll let you instant book but that's the good thing about having the code i just send them the code and i'm asleep man Oh really? Yeah, I don't sleep after I send you that code. If you don't get the code, then it isn't too bad if you're checking in late. Yeah, but I mean, some people had a common sense though to like send me a message first before they book at three in the morning and make sure like there's someone there to like help them out, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you mean by that. That's yeah, I'm true. Like, okay, but like, come on. <laughs> yeah, some people like instant book at one o'clock in the morning and hope you're up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Open the door. Open the door. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um. One 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 tip I did hear on on another podcast was um, this guy. He he pretty much lets his guests do have have the run of the house. But when a guest does ask something like, well, let's say washing machine, or they ask something special out of you know kind of out of it, uh, a little bit above and beyond, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
he'll 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 let them but this is how he does it he goes he tells them you know i really i don't let guests do this but but i like you so i'm, I'm gonna go ahead and let you do this you know and he said man that just that little thing like making them feel like they're, they're doing something that no one else can do he goes, he goes but don't tell anybody on your um you know on your comments that that i let you do this that five stars boom 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 every time they just think it they think they're getting away with something oh this guy's so cool man you know ah, I, I just i thought so it was kinda, the guest for the five it's, stars instead of just saying yeah you go ahead do it you know you tell them i don't let people but go ahead you know go you can do it you know <laughs> and i thought it was cool a little bit a little bitty trick a little bitty trick Okay. That's a good idea for the first. James don't care about stars, you know. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna lie. The first time I met James, he goes, "Oh, I'm a terrible host. I don't really care." <laughs> don't, don't say that loud. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my bad. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> okay. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, different ways. I, I hear there's an Airbnb for dogs. You heard of that? You heard of that? No, I, I forget. Let me see. I put it on my on the on the list. I I forgot what website. There, there might there might be a few that does it already, that do it already, and it's um, okay. If, if you're a dog owner, you own any you own, Oh, you don't own dogs. You own dogs. No. I, I don't. Okay. Well, a lot of a lot of people do, and it's a hassle when people are flying out or going somewhere to they have to board their damn dogs. The freaking boarding places, man, like forty fifty a night. Oh, you know, it's doggy expensive. Doggy daycare. Yeah, those doggy. Yeah. What people are doing, dog lovers are getting on there and they're, they're, well, this is it's a website. It's the Airbnb for dogs. I don't know what, the, I forgot what the, I don't know, Fido, B&B, whatever the hell it's called. But, um, but people that, that are cool with dogs, they say, yeah, we'll take care of your dog for, for 20 a night, you know, or 15 or whatever. It, it saves the people money. They don't have to go to these spots that charge a crap load and just sticks them in a cage, you know, kind of thing. It's people that they are cool with dogs and they, they keep them at their house and, People go out of town, come back, and boom. What's the return on that, though? Like, because, I mean, you're going to have to dye the dog food. Well, a week's worth of food. Well, I, maybe they have to bring the food for the dog kind of thing. Oh. At, at those at those places, too, you got to bring the food that you want the dog to eat. At those $50 a night kennel places. Really? You got to bring the food for the dog. I guess if, unless you pay extra and you want them to feed it, whatever, they feed the premium dog food. But you can bring the food for the dog, bring the whatever treats and stuff like this, toys, shit, stuff like that. Dude, that's really smart. Well, it's I a, know. It's a great idea. If you if you like dogs, you can have like 10, 15 dogs at your house making bank. I mean, uh, I don't know about 10. No, I'm talking about the idea, guy who came out with that idea. That's smart. No, it is, it's just a great idea. Yeah. So if you those, have... Boarding a dog is expensive. So 15 dogs at your house, you're charging them 20 a night. That's some serious good. yeah it's a nice little chunk of change man yeah how'd they get into that doggy b&b <laughs> doggy b&b that might be what's called but... nah, y- y'all do that y'all more more power to y'all i can't handle dogs. <laughs> <laughs> hey man i'll put them in a kennel i'll be good man. <laughs> put, put them in a cages <laughs> yeah, man, hey. but like other ways of using um the share economy the share economy yeah. And, yeah do y'all know of any other creative ways have you ever heard any different ways people are doing it I know Turo's coming up. Toro, like the yeah, car. Toro. Toro's coming up. I have a friend that does that. You, for real? Yeah, for real. So how's how's it? How's the ROI for him? Because like I heard a guy on Bigger Pockets. Terrible. Was, it is. Yeah, this dude because he he was trying to get me to do it. He's like, I do it with my Airbnb because my idea was, I want to do it with my Airbnb, but I don't want to do it with Toro because Toro requires you to have a new car. So I'm like, it's no point of having a car note and you're sitting here. You're not gonna get an ROI on a freaking car. It ain't gonna appreciate. You know what I mean? So, right. I don't know. How, how's he doing with Toro? He he likes it. It's okay, but I wouldn't really call it like a slam dunk or something. Yeah, I couldn't see it being. So, how much does he rent the car? What kind of car is it? And how much does he rent it out? I, I don't remember the specifics of it exactly, but I do remember when uh, the car was in an accident or something. Um, he oh, um, no. went through a, like a lot of trouble because the Toro insurance is like a, it's pretty complicated. As, as it is, so there's a um, because we I think we I don't know if you read online about how Airbnb has bad insurance as well. Oh, I've heard okay, so the the Airbnb thing, the uh, host and guest insurance thing, I've heard people on Bigger Pockets say that it's good. I've heard three people say three good stories. I'm still not sure on it, so I still cover myself with short term rental insurance. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm guessing Turo's the same way. It's kind of sketchy. Um, for him. He didn't get the payout that he wanted. Uh, it's, it's such a, it was such a complicated case that I don't remember the exact details, but I just remember that it wasn't like 
as simple as if I hit your car, then it's really straightforward. But with Toro, it was like a lot of uh, like a lot of um, jumping through hoops and stuff like that. So the person who had his car, did they hit someone or someone hit him? I think he hit the person that hit his car hit someone. Ah, oh, yeah. Because if someone hit him, that'd been in a straight insurance case where the other insurance would have paid for the um, the Toro car. Damn. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Uh, that's very interesting, but the insurance thing. So I think he hit a bicycle though too. So that's so like I think that was Damn. a great song. We just add it on. Yeah. So was he drunk? <laughs> was he drunk? I don't think so. It's not, not too complicated now. <laughs> Damn. So that's, uh, I don't know about Toro, man. I don't want to. Yeah, but I, I, I don't. I read through it. It seems like a very much of a um of a hassle because you have to either deliver your car. How do you get the car there? Or they come to you or something? And then yeah, I guess they come to you. What a lot of people do is. What the guy that I was talking to, what he does is he rents out his room, and he only uses his lets his Airbnb guests use his Turo. Okay. So you just hey, if you want my car, you just go to Turo and you, boom, you know you book it through Turo, but you have to be my Airbnb guest. Yeah, but then what do you drive personally? You know. I, I guess he has his third car, but at the same time he told me he has a BMW, for the Turo car. I'm like, what? Yeah. BMW? Yeah. That's what I'm like, damn, you're, you're paying a car note? That, that's all, I can't see the return on that. Right. Plus, it, the car is depreciating it because you're driving it. You know what I mean? Unless you need some write-offs or something, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I couldn't see. I don't know. That, like, that's what I was saying. If I was to do it, I'd keep Turo out of it. But yeah, it's all types of ways that the sure economy is growing. But I don't know if Turo's on the rise. How, how I was going to use Turo, I was, I was trying to get a, a condo in South Padre Island, right? And I wanted, I was like, well, I've always wanted a Jeep. I could leave it there. Of course, it's just going to sit there when we're not at the island, right? Mm-hmm. But I was like, well, I could tour it out. People can fly in, you know, people come into town and they can use my, use the Jeep while they're there. And then I started thinking about, oh man, what do you do when you go to South Padre Island? You drink and you party, right? Yeah. I'm going to be <laughs> drinking and driving with my thing. It's going to, yeah. they might get in an accident. It might get impounded. I started, I was like, man, it can't be that simple. You know, it's always, it's always risks. I think Airbnb would have a good a good chance to buy out Toro and just add a car to their features. Like, hey, this person has a car for you. I mean, of course, their insurance rates are going to go up because they're going to have to provide insurance. But I think that could work. Because then you're becoming a full-blown travel agent. You have a car, your vacation spot, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I mean. And I didn't tell you uh, the finality of my buying the condo in South oh Padre yeah Island. what happened with that well you know it's crazy it and yeah and it was yesterday i found out so everything's motoring along pretty good um you know i've, I've been approved for a while and everything's you know whatever I, I can get this thing and um the bank's cool with it but the only thing the only thing like you were worried about uh, james about um about a- dealing with hoas and i don't know how it is where you're at but this well this particular hoa it's it's two sixty a month. If you're gonna be by a beach or something like that, then um, that's about you know two fifty two to three hundred. You're gonna pay you know for a, for a HOA fee you know because they got a pool, they got all this stuff. But anyways, um, so so the their first problem with the HOA was they didn't have sufficient insurance in case uh, for flood flood insurance. That was a big thing. Okay. And so they had to um, they had to up their insurance, which there was a back and forth battle. You know this was going on for a while. But then finally they decided to up it, and it didn't even cost that much to up it to to the to the level they needed. So that was taken care of, and we're wait you know still waiting on some things and getting you know dealing with trying to get a mortgage is, is a pain in the butt. But add that with them going back and forth with the HOA, it's even it's even more uh, challenging. And so anyways, this other thing popped up. I mean we're already coming down to closing time, right? And this other thing popped up about their pool. And they said it's a it's a shared pool. They they have they have a swimming pool at their complex. You know, it's a thirty unit complex, but the complex next to them they share the swimming pool with them. Okay, no big deal. Well, it is a big deal in the eyes of well, my bank's Wells Fargo, but I guess um, Fannie Mae is backing the loan somehow, something like that. I'm not a you're a finance guy. You know that better than me how that works. But um, that's a big deal because like if someone got hurt, injured, died in the pool. Who's going to be responsible for paying that, you know? Right. Paying their injuries or paying whatever they got to pay for this. And who that they get sued in these two complexes that share a pool. And for that freaking reason, and they said it's, it's a no. We can't, we can't give the loan because of that swimming pool 
it's freaking crazy man so that's the finality wow. but when he told me that he told me that i was at work you know but it was like this um this kind of like this burden was lifted from my shoulders man i was just like i kind of was like you know i'm cool with that it's not supposed I, to happen I, i'm I, yeah, yeah, and I was like, and I was thinking, oh, well, you and I are planning on doing Micah, you know, get our get our Airbnbs going, get yeah. our you know get our business going, and I was gonna and I was gonna drop a big load of cash to get this freaking condo, big down payment, yeah. and I was gonna pay it every month, and I and I happened to buy it at the the worst time of year because summer's coming to an end, so I'm closing right with summer coming in, and I'm gonna have this, this mortgage payment every month that I have to figure out how to pay. I mean, I mean, I could pay it, but it's gonna have to bust my ass at work and. And I already got two other, you know, two other houses. And I was just, and we got a new baby. And I was just like, when he told me that news, I was just, it was a burden lifted. I was like, ah. and I, and I saw that the prices in, in Padre are, are, are dropping and drop people trying to get out of their condos. And I'm yeah. like, man, it's, 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 this is good. This See, is that's good. what I always say. If you're going to do Airbnb, have a, have a back, like a, an extra strategy, pretty much. Like, that's why I tell people, if you're going to go the whole, hey, I just want to buy in a vacation rental area. Vacation rental areas usually have a down season. It's hard to find, you know, people trying to book. So that might have been a big relief off your soul, like you know, a big relief, you know. And and it was, and it just the just the finality of it, because we're going on almost three months, because they're going back and forth with the HOA. The you know, most most houses close within a month, right? Yeah. And um, finally, I was just like, oh, man, it was like a relief. It was a relief, and I'm and I'm excited to be able to use that you know that money towards towards the business towards getting what we what we're planning on doing going so boom yeah sorry right now and it wasn't it wasn't beachfront condo it was a nice condo it wasn't beachfront and in the future if i do get one i i, I want that beachfront i want to sip coffee in the morning and watch the sun come up Absolutely. that's just that's that's my dream you know yeah definitely so, man. there's my my finality the finality of the story of the condo that's been plaguing us for 10 episodes yeah, dodge right. a bullet. We're going to have to uh, update the website. Steve's condo not coming at all. No, sir. <laughs> Arlington a, House is. It, Arlington House. You know, party house. Bring your... No, no. It's not a party house. <laughs> After he gets the testicular <laughs> fortitude to kick someone to the curb. Testicular fortitude. Yes. <laughs> you know, South, South Padre Island is interesting, though, because um, I was in a fraternity um, this past year for my senior year of college, and we went to uh, South Padre Island for a uh, spring break trip. I love South Padre. Yeah, but the, um, we had a lot of trouble um, getting a condo though, because there were like no spring breakers. Yeah. Oh. And my and my complex we, said that too, no spring breakers. So that was going to cut into my funds. See, because we we talked about that on the podcast. So so my question is this, because this is the question we had: How did they know you were a spring breaker? Well, I, I was older, so I was going to be like, "Yeah, I'm renting it for my work buddies." <laughs> yeah, he would have got passed because most of them say. No, 25 and up. You have to be 25 or up to rent the place. No partiers, no spring breakers, whatever. Mm. So that 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 cancels a lot of them right then and there. Because after, hopefully by 25, you're not a spring breaker anymore. But even though there are dudes that go into their 30s. <laughs> yeah. Still yeah come I was on. like 28, 29. <laughs> Dang, man. I guess they do have a little screening process. Uh, sucks. Yeah. But you can get around it. It's just yeah, the, the yeah. fact. And there was some, they passed some more strict. Law. I've been following. You know, they've been passing some more strict laws this year. And one of the one of the laws is, you know, Padre is a big party, right? So any at any given moment, this whole mob can form in this block, you know, and just start partying. Like kind of like you know, block parties or a big section of the beach by those hotels. And if stuff gets out of hand at close to these condos, or something goes down, they they passed a law where the owner. Or someone representing the owner has to come down there and let the cops into that place. Or you're going to get a fine or, you know, all this stuff. I mean, it was like a strict rule. But so, I mean, a lot of people like like me, I would own it from over here. Who, how the hell am I going to get, get there for the cops to let me in? I'm going to get this big ass fine because somebody's doing stupid stuff at the, at the condos and they want to get in. They have to have an owner or a representative of the owner. It, it, yeah, it's it's crazy. It is a new law that just passed, and I was like, all this stuff's happening. I'm like, man, maybe I should. Yeah, you dodged a bullet. <laughs> yeah, you dodged a big bullet. I mean, that ain't worth it. You dodged a big bullet. Everything so, happens for a reason, man. Everything happens for a reason, right, James? Yeah. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got any any topics you wanted to bring up, man? Oh no, man. Oh yeah, the, um, <laughs> you're like, no, I'm good. <laughs> actually, yeah, yeah, the, the um. <laughs> I've had like issues the last two weeks with my timeshare, and I noticed this about Airbnb. 
one thing you do depend on with the Airbnb is other people's hospitality. It's like with the timeshare. Because like I had three people complain. Like the people at the front desk were rude. And I'm like, dang, it ain't nothing really I can do about that. You know what I mean? So I'm kind of dependent on other people's hospitality. So I'm starting to get two or three negative reviews. And they're like starting to fluctuate. Like what, four stars or something? Or? No, it's like people like, well, some of them are four stars. Some of them are five stars. But some, they kind of, I don't know if other guests can see like the communication feedback that they leave. What do you mean? The, like the, the feedback, like, hey, this guest was rude. Oh, yeah, or, yeah, absolutely. They can see that. Can yeah, see, that. see? So, yeah. So, it's kind of hard to, you know, kind of... I'm not in control of the actual hospitality. I'm dependent on other people. Uh-huh. You know, and I just started coming up with that. But other than that, right, right. everything else has been good. My house is... My personal Airbnbs are always good. So Would y'all rent or run an Airbnb in an... <laughs> In an air in a war zone. See, you had a re- you have a rentals in war zones, right? Yeah. Now, rentals. would you consider doing Airbnbs in in a in said war zone? Or you be afraid? You be afraid for the safety of your uh, your guests? Mm. That's a hard question. <laughs> I'm because I used to be. Uh, if I, you, had, you asked me like before the dead body, I'd be like, yeah, by all means. But now after that, I'm like. It freaked you out. That's gonna <laughs> suck on my review. No, okay, because some um, at my parents' house, my brother would bring his dog every once in a while, and then mm-hmm. the guest, I get a review every once in a while. I'd be like, "There was a dog at the house," and I'm like, "Man," I tell my brother, "Dude, I'm telling you, leave your dog at home when you come over." He's like, "No, no, it's my, it's my buddy." I'm like, "Your buddy is like scaring people," but but uh, it's my brother, so I put up with it, and I take the the hit on my reviews, but I don't know if I can take a hit of like they stole my car or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. But Warzone. I mean, didn't we see a couple of listens that said they were kind of in the hood? And they, um, yeah, I told you about that in one of the yeah. early episodes. There was a guy like in Compton written out a spot, <laughs> <laughs> written, out a, written out a couch. And I swear it was a real, it was because I was looking at some spots in LA and it was, and it said Compton. And he goes, and I think the headline was, Your very own hood experience. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, oh my god! And it took a picture of this nasty ass um, couch, a sofa, right, uh-huh. in this like real hooded out house. And it's and and then he was and, and I, like I said, I don't know if he was being funny, if it was a real listing. And right. it was like it was like like a hundred bucks a night, you know, for this stupid little sofa. And he said, um, he goes watch tr- uh, drive bys and drug transactions out your out your front window. You know, it's like trying to like a salesman, <laughs> your very own hood experience. And I was like. What? And I and I told Mike I think maybe he made the listing just to, so funny. he could um get that ref- get that that twenty dollars yeah. off his <laughs> whatever you know I when mean, you rent on Airbnb he like priced it high he priced it real high get like a twenty dollar travel credit yeah, oh, yeah. If, yeah if you book if you put your place on Airbnb you get oh, like I, a I travel didn't know that. credit okay and I mean, so I, I, don't, I wouldn't do it in a war zone area just because of the reviews you're gonna get somebody's gonna complain and, and i feel like the liability issues as well yeah. i mean there's like difference between like oh man the dog barked then versus like something serious happening you know yeah because even matter of fact i had a lady cancel her reservation because she said she googled where my timeshare was and she goes it's in a bad neighborhood i was like as many and i had a bunch of five-star views no one ever said it was in a bad neighborhood and also some people google gives you false information sometimes people google a neighborhood and all of a sudden they think it's bad it's really not they're in like this time she was in a gated community like it's 24 hours security staff on on uh on call on rotation it was like okay i'll let her cancel but oh well no well well. i texted you earlier man i was having such a effed up day at work man i was just i was one of those days where i just want to quit you know, yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. I mean, you talked about it. I was like, ah, oh, yeah. I just wish I could quit my job and yeah. just do the Airbnb full time or do uh, whatever real estate full time. And I and I and I hit you up. I was like, man, I'm having the f, you know, an f my job day today. Yeah. And I, and I texted you, oh, dude, I have those all the time. Or you said more yeah. and more. Yeah. I'm, now that I'm diving deep into being an entrepreneur, I'm having them more and more, man. Like I realize the jobs taking time away from my business that i could be growing like especially today because i'm like having to talk to developers in india i can't do it i'm trying to talk to them and it's just a lot of stuff you know what i mean especially when you officially have adopted that entrepreneurial mindset right it's really hard and you start having them day by day because the stuff you have to do for your business 
and it's just you don't have that time yet. So, so you'll get there, James. I know you're just diving into the job world, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he has a big enough portfolio. He's probably, you know. I try to streamline as much. Well, I have I have two partners, so we split the work amongst amongst us. So that's that's very, good. Very that's nice. Good. How, how how do y'all split it up? I mean, that's why I was wondering how a partnership would work. Yeah, that's how me and Mike plan on doing a partnership. Mm-hmm. How how do y'all split up the work? How do we split the work? Um, we were friends before, so let's get that out of the way. So it wasn't like I partnered with some guy I met somewhere. It's, we're mm-hmm. just friends, and I'm like, hey, bro, check this out. Like, let's do this, and then it just kind of worked out. And um, I used to be like, let's let's um, so for the, during the, during my early days, there was we had to collect the rent by cash. This is before I figured out what the chase did and everything. And so I'll be like, I'll, I'll like, hey, we'll just take turns every month. So this month will be me. This month will be you. But it was really too too rigid, and um, and so we went away at that, and we just went more flexible. It's like, hey, I'm free. I'm free. I'll grab the rent. Or you're free. You grab the rent. And we just we have a good chemistry going on. So it wouldn't really. It's harder to reproduce with someone else, I guess, because in my particular situation, it was just that we have a good chemistry, and so yeah. we just happen to work out that way. And then we're both pretty um, polite, chill, chill people, I guess. Yeah. To it, um. That's what me and Steve talk about. Like even with running the podcast, and like I run my business on the side, we always talk about how good we are at. He'll chop up episode. I'll be posting stuff. So yeah, you got to have that right partner, especially someone who's dependable on top of it. And that's how we kind of. We kind of already bounced that off of each other, so yeah, it's good. Right, you and we're not we're not like also that. not afraid to uh, call each other out. It's something um, definitely something that we you know, might disagree on or something like that. Holding people accountable, yeah, that's the biggest thing. So James, mm-hmm. uh, as a kid, were you did you always have like an entrepreneurial spirit as a kid? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I, did. I did, I did. So you were set, had lemonade stands, stuff like that, or what? Oh man. Okay, I didn't know what a peach was when I was little. I didn't know how big they got, but we yeah. had a peach tree, but they were like a size of like a walnut. And mm-hmm. my ass was like, "Oh, I seen a lemonade stand on TV. You know, maybe I could sell peaches. <laughs> I got a little bucket and put peaches in there. Sat in front of the, the driveway, and I'm like, peaches. <laughs> <laughs> that was your first uh, entrepreneurial job, or yeah, uh, first gig? entrepreneurial thing I did. If I could. Yeah. On the spot, uh, if, uh, I can think far back. You know, as, a, as the first thing I did. Obviously, did anybody buy any peaches? Obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man! You know what's funny? What, that's actually a good question. We should ask people. What was your first experience as an entrepreneur? What was yours? Steve? My first experience as an entrepreneur. I ran an illegal prostitution. R- oh no, no. <laughs> that's that's they your call experience. Papa, Papa son. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> man, going way back, I used to. Um, Man, what did I do? I did well. Yeah, going far. I'll go back to high school. I ran like um, like football pots, <laughs> but just for like a quarter of a square yeah. kind of thing. And you know, you pay out the winner won like five bucks a, a quarter. You know, oh, and then I'd get like a, a dollar off of that. You know, it was, it that was a little bad. bit, a little some change. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, it's a, it's illegal gambling. I probably could have got <laughs> got busted for that. <laughs> no, I mean, Airbnbs run off of breaking the rules, though. You know, right? You had the whole um, uh, hotel occupancy rules and stuff like that. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. I, mean, I was I was being a good citizen, paying those at first, but they uh, they kind of start taking it out of it automatically. You know? Oh, really? Yeah, Airbnb. So. But you know what I what I did used to do back in um you know the video arcades back when those were big deal you know yeah um and then that, there's that machine where you drop a quarter down and this thing that pushes quarters into this abyss and yeah. then and then you win tokens right mm-hmm. however many quarters fell down and I got good at that so I'd win these tokens and then I'd go wait by the token machine and I'd go sell them five for a dollar instead of you know getting four for a dollar from the machine. So I made, you know, make 10 or 11 bucks in, oh, in, in a day, you know. Full-blown entrepreneurs in here, man. You got the peach guy and the... And the illegal gambling guy. Yeah, the illegal gambling. <laughs> That's good, man. Hey, you, Micah, what was your first... Um... Uh, I don't know if I could talk about it on no, air. Come on. Do it. Okay, my first uh, entrepreneurial experience was, you know, when Kazaa and LimeWire were real big? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And downloading so, stuff. Do you sell CDs? I had a kid that sells CDs in middle school. Uh, <laughs> I was selling CDs and other stuff. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I sell CDs, but also I, I started a uh, pornography ring where I kind of downloaded. <laughs> you sell then, porn? Yeah, that was my first gig. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> 
No, come on. Like as a kid, yeah. you're like, oh, dude, I got a hookup. I got a porn guy. Yeah, bro. Dude, <laughs> yeah. You, yeah, you were a popular dude, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I was. Man. I had a pretty good business. It was pretty good. So, yeah. So, was there any um, strange requests in your um, porn? <laughs> No, but I did have a bad complaint of a bad copy one time. Guy actually uh, knocked on my door. I'm like, hey, man, my parents live here. You can't come to my house. <laughs> like, man, you can't come here complaining. You got to send me a text or something, man. <laughs> How am I supposed to perform to this? <laughs> okay, we're getting crazy now. Yeah, that, that, I, that was my first experience. I had, I had a, um, I sat in on a, this is a, unrelated to that, <laughs> unrelated to porn. You can't, there's no way. We've tried it before. To segue away from porn or whatever or prostitution, and it, it just don't work. Anyways, I'm diving into the next thing. Okay. And um, this, what we're doing right now kind of reminds me of this. We um, for in science class, we we for extra credit, we could go sit in at a, a veterinarian's office and watch what they mm-hmm. did for the day, take notes, blah blah blah. And so I did that, and my cousin joined me, and we we both like helped him <laughs> spay and neuter dogs, and kind of crazy, you know. We we watch you know watched them, and it was pretty gross. But anyways, um, and the, the doctor, the the veterinarian, he told us, he goes, "Yeah, I'm surprised y'all are really good students. You know, usually what they say, if you have you have one boy, you have one boy. If you have you make two boys in the mix, you know, and something, you have." Let's say you have half a boy, because you know, because they're just they're acting like they start acting stupid and stuff. To, yeah. You know, boys. Just he goes, and if you if you have three boys, you have no boy. <laughs> kind of like you totally lose the room once yeah. you have three guys. And so we're three dudes right now, and and yeah, sorry fans, sorry, yeah, sorry yeah, for yeah. what's sorry about that. Never mind. This Guess we'll real. start keeping our personal lives to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so how was your week, Micah? Good, good, good. Long week. Um, need more time. Week wasn't long enough. Days. I don't have enough days. Well, enough hours in one day, man. Just, I see. The, the job cuts into that, right? Exactly. And that's my point, man. It's like getting my job's cut into everything I do. So I'm ba- I'm balancing it though. How many know? How many years do you see having left at your job? If everything goes to plan and my vision works out like I want it to, I could see myself retiring in five years. Nice. Because nice. I do have something big in the works that I'll, I'll I'll share it when it's there, when it's done. Okay. So, man, what a tease! <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's gonna. Me and my wife are really going over it. It's gonna t- take some work. Cause I was telling Steve about like, man, I just got to get this off the ground. Then I can dive back into going out there, looking at properties, getting acquiring properties. So. Hopefully in the next five years. Because me and my wife both want to be retired by the time we're 40. Oh, really? Yeah, by the time we're 40. So what would what, 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 uh, you consider retirement? Or what would it be like like retirement? My business is fully paying for itself. Okay. And we're making enough to where we are cash flow. I want to be able to cash flow 10 grand a month. Okay. Yeah. That's, so, that's fair. Yeah. So right now... We're not close, but we have something in the works. So, would you, uh, at retirement, would you like grow it or you'd be like chilling in the Bahama drinking? Like, well, I definitely, mm, I'd grow from the 10, of course. I grow it, but I also do. Me and my wife, the reason why we got into Airbnb is because we love to travel and I want to see the world. You know, uh, we had a guest on a couple weeks ago and he said, uh, Jasper, actually, he said, man, I'd, I'd, I'd hate dying and knowing that i never got to see the world like that that was like what me and my wife literally said to each other like we really want to go see the world we want to go outside of the country go to different parts of the world you know so i'd be doing that in retirement but i also have a two-year-old son so i have to make sure he's in school so nice yeah james when are you gonna retire <laughs> uh, like like I said earlier, I'm kind of like a finance nerd and the whole real estate thing i kind of got i'll just keep doing it until i can't anymore yeah yeah so i think because with that with that chinese lady we like to um brag to each other you know so i used to like should be like uh, right now since it's like um it's like little brownie landlord measuring contest you know so i'll be like hey i fixed this by myself what did you do or in the future it'll probably be like i got this property and this is doing x x x y and z and like in your face it's better than your other property and something something yeah. like that yeah, because you were talking last week. You said you do a lot of all the work yourself on your properties. Yeah. Yeah, yeah at the beginning. You, yeah, you said you had almost a few death mishaps. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. This is a podcast, so it's not really a visual, but um, <laughs> how do I put this? Okay, so we had a tree we needed to cut down, and I was like, because we also got that, uh, it was that one of the houses that that Chinese lady owned, and so I'm like, yeah, we're going to cut down this tree by ourselves, and she's like, yeah, good job, James, and I'm like, dang straight, yeah, you know, I'm like, but then I'm like, man, I really don't know how to cut down a tree, you know, so I'm going to go YouTube, I'm going to go YouTube, and I'm like, I'm going to wing it, so I'll wing it, and we got like a homemade saw, I didn't know there were like levels of saws you can buy, so we got this saw that was like way too small cut on the tree, and then we bit the bullet and got like a saw at Home Depot, and so we're cutting down the tree, cutting down branches and stuff, but the problem with cutting down branches is they fall, and I'm standing there, and they're cutting down a branch, and I didn't, I didn't think to move out of the way, and so there's a branch slowly going down, it's like, and I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> it's my time, it's my time, <laughs> you know, so it, like it nearly misses me, it's like, okay, all right, cool, I'll just keep going on, and it happened a second time, and I'm like, you know what? We gotta finish this. So we just finished cutting on the tree, and then uh, Kevin just gives me like a hard time for narrowly getting injured by a falling branch or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 man, That's saving a buck. Saving a buck. Yeah, but the, I get to show off to that Chinese lady, and I'll be like, "Check out what we did," you know. And she, I don't know. It's just it's just fun one upping um, people in your circle, I guess. Right. Right. Yeah. That's cool, man. Hey, man, and going back to, like, what Steve was saying about quitting your job, do you guys, like, me and my wife, when we wake up, we listen to these motivational speeches by, like, Will Smith, uh, Tony Robbins, uh, Steve Harvey, and they always take say the biggest thing is taking that first step. Do you guys listen to any motivational material that gets you there to keep on motivating you outside um, of podcasts? Who's that? Um, who's that? Who's that big, huge, tall dude? What's Tony Robbins? <laughs> Tony Robbins. Yeah, that's who yeah, that's about. what you said. Uh, he's good. Um, um, the four-hour work week, uh, four work week guy. Uh, what the heck's his name? I see these names are slipping me. Slipping. Yeah. Me. I listen to these podcasts by these guys, and they, yeah, and it is motivational. Rich dad, poor dad. Yeah. Um, stuff the, like you know the, the usual suspects. But um, I just, I just, man, I just. Even on these podcasts that come on the uh, the um, the real estate ones, the Airbnb podcast, these people hop on here, and they're not just um, hey, we're, I'm a real estate dude, you know, this is what I buy, this is what I sell it for, blah blah blah. They they have these awesome nuggets of wisdom, man. So I I, I don't even I don't remember all their names, but yeah. I just know, man, they 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 drop this knowledge. I write it down or I stop it, you know, and and, and I try to remember who they. I don't have their names in front of me, but man, every time I hear a podcast, I, I even if it's one that's like ah, it's kind of like I don't know if I should listen to this one. I'm not a wholesaler. I'm not going to blah, blah, blah. But even that guy that's doing the wholesaling, he's, he, he drops these, you know, his motivational things and stuff like that. I'm, Man, I'm glad I listened to this podcast. Because I, I get, I, if I get one thing out of, out of a podcast, that, that's something that's going to help me. And I'm like, it was totally worth it, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, I can't really, I, I can't name them right now. I can't, I'm, I'm yeah. terrible with names. <laughs> but yeah, I, I have a lot of, from the podcast. The podcast gods. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, because I always try to keep things that keep the energy up with it, you know. And one good thing is me and my wife, we with the team of keeping it up and together, so we can keep on moving and f- focusing on a goal. Right, so, right. Yeah, man. That's good. That's good. Yeah, having a second person really really helps with that because yeah. then. You kind of feel like you're letting the other guy down, or you don't want to look stupid, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because when you're by yourself, it's easy to like, fall, let to, it go, yeah, to lapse just back, slack. you know. Yeah. So yeah, having that that extra motivation next to you that helps you, man. Like even when us keeping this podcast going, that's an extra motivation. Big time, dude. Big yeah. time. Yeah, I'm glad we're doing it. I'm glad James could join us again this week. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and um, it's already at the hour mark. If y'all don't mind, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and shut it down. Unless there's anything you wanted to add. Nah, that was it, man. Another good episode. Episode, what? Ten. Ten? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Double um, digits. Catch us on uh, at Live, Let, Thrive. On, catch us at thrive.com or on Facebook, YouTube. Uh, we'll actually, if James wants to, uh, on our show notes, we'll add some links to his Airbnb. Also, you know? um, have a video of me cutting down that tree. I can give that to you. Nice. Oh, yeah. That'll be good yeah. entertainment, man. We'll put that online, man. Yeah, put I that made, on the I've website. Made, I made a little video. <laughs> Big time. Oh, okay. Yeah. This, this video. I, not where I almost died because that would be retarded. You know, 
<laughs> oh, there's a tree. It's just getting recorded. No, no, it's just no, I recorded us cutting down the tree. Is what it was. Okay, cool, Shoot. cool, cool, man. You guys can hit James up for your financial needs. Yeah, Airbnb. finance man. Yeah, hit us up. We'll we'll put you in contact with James. Four six nine three hundred ninety one hundred. Hit us up. Deuces. Adios. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Live, Let, Thrive. Be sure to tune in next week for all the latest in the world of Airbnb and all that entails. Bye-bye.